What's up, YouTube? It's Richie from Boston. It's the 23rd of May, and it's 2018. And you are looking at five Bible verses about fallen angels. How you have fallen from heaven, O star of the morning, son of the dawn, Lucifer, cut down to earth. You are weakened the nations. Luke 10, 18. I was watching Satan fall from heaven like lightning. Revelation 12, 7 through 17, and there was a war in heaven. Michael and his angels were waging war with the dragon. The dragon and his angels waged war, and they were not strong enough. 2 Peter 2, 4, for if God did not spare angels when they sinned, but cast them into hell and committed them to pits of darkness reserved for judgment. Now, a lot of people claim to be Christian, a lot of people claim to read the Bible, but they look at this and don't understand that this is for real. This is for real. These things are for real. And here's a little bit of evidence. You hear about Satan, you hear about Lucifer, fallen angels, demons, stuff like that all the time. But you have to understand, for time immemorial, these things have been down here. Do you see what I'm saying? And what in the world would inspire somebody to do something like this simply because they want attention? If they wanted to attention, they could just make a video about me. They didn't have to go through all this, but they do. And when you look at somebody like this and you hear what they have to say and what they think about certain things, you understand that these people are demonically possessed. Fallen angels shed their first estate, but they also shed their form, but they can take over human beings. And they've been doing that for an incredibly long time. You don't believe me? Listen to this. This is Chuck Missler. This is from End Times Production, one of the YouTube channels that I do actually follow. Now, these legends, we, we obviously, we see in the Sumer culture, in Assyria, in Egypt. I'll show you a few things. In the Incas, the Mayan, the Epic of Gilgamesh, in the Persian mythology, and certainly in the Greek mythology, which most of us as products of Western civilization are familiar with. Also in India, Bolivia, South Sea Islands. Every one of these cultures, including the American Indians, every one of these cultures have legends of the star people. These people that came, these gods or demigods, whatever, came and cohabited with women and produced, a, produced hybrids. I discover from some uh, apparent experts in the American Indian culture that this business of holding a hand up saying how, that's Hollywood. Uh, but what apparently was the practice when they met a stranger was to hold up the hand so they could count fingers. They had a terror of the six-fingered people. And if you go to uh, the ruins at Chaca, New Mexico, one, they have a, one of the exhibits there that you want to take a look at, the famous pictographs. And among those pictographs, you'll find the, the fearsome six-fingered hand as part of that. They, I came across something else that's kind of... The Pawnee Indians have an account that Bill... You remember uh, Buffalo Bill? real name is William Cody. He wrote his autobiography in 1920. Very colorful guy. You can get his book. It's popular. But there's an interesting quote in his book by, Bill Co by Buffalo Bill, Bill Cody, uh, published in 1920. He says, while we were in the sand hills scouting the Niobara uh, country, the Pawnee Indians brought into camp some very large bones, one of which the surgeon of the expedition pronounced to be the thigh bone of a human being. The Indians said the bones were those of a race of people who long ago had lived in that country. They said these people were three times the size of a man of the present day. And they were so swift and strong that they could run by the side of a buffalo and taking the animal in one arm could tear off a leg and eat it as they ran. <laughs> I don't know what to make of that. It's in his autobiography. It's published in 1920. Uh, I don't think he was worried about UFOs and stuff, but you, it is a uh, interesting allusion to the Indian, Indian lessons. Uh, in the uh, early country, uh, Asher, they, ha they always speak of the flying god of Asher. And this diagram you see in many, many of the ancient uh, monuments of uh, a man with a bow, like Nimrod perhaps, and, uh, the, uh, and the wings. Now, I've shown you this before. These are actual pictographs that I'm standing in front of, petroglyphs that are located in the deserts of Arizona and Moab. And I can't help 
But notice that even back in these times, these people went through all the trouble of drawing these things. While they were trying to feed themselves, clothe themselves, protect themselves from other tribes, so forth and so on. But if you notice in this video, one, two, three, four, five, and then right next to it is a larger foot with one, two, three, four, five, six toes. Now I go on to tell you in this video that it isn't just one time. It's three separate times on this, this pictograph or petroglyph, whatever you'd like to call it. But these things are scattered all over the country. And this is one that I found in the middle of the desert. It shows a woman giving birth, apparently, next to what appears to be a giant. Do you see what I'm saying? And every time, just like Chuck Missler, just like End Times Productions was showing you, there's always a spiral and a serpent associated with it. Anytime you find a drawing that shows anything with five toes, five fingers, six toes, six fingers, there's always a spiral, there's always regular sized people, and there's always a serpent. And this one right here is no different. You think they went through all the trouble to make two separate feet? One's drastically larger and different. One's got five, the other's got six. These people were trying to warn us. That's why you carve things in stone. I'm sure they were all well aware of the great flood that came and washed everything away. Well, you can't really wash rocks away. Do you see what I'm saying? At any rate, it isn't just this. There's things all over the world and all over the United States that back this up. These people weren't playing. The people that write history, the people that charge you income tax, the people that make you pay for gasoline, the people that suppress technology are also lying about your history. This is the Great Serpent Mound in Ohio. I'm 450 feet above it, and you notice that it's a perfectly designed snake coming out of a spiral holding an egg in its mouth. Do you see what I'm saying? Now, everyone tells you that this was made by the ancient Indians. Well, that's not the case, because if you talk to any actual Native Americans that know the true story, that they know that there were bones of giants found all around these mounds all over the United States. This one just happens to be a perfect example, because from 450 feet, you get a clear picture of what's going on. The spiral's right here. The snake's body's right here. And he's holding an egg in his mouth right here. This is all done in a place that's very inaccessible. It's on the edge of a cliff and it's still perfectly preserved and it's visited by lots of people that really do know what's going on. I've got this video up right now in 4K resolution. If you want to watch it, I'll leave links in the description as well as links to Chuck Missler, End Times Productions, and my original Moab petroglyph video. But there's more coming. These people were warning us. That's why you carve it in stone. That's why we have that analogy. It's not real till it's carved in stone, correct? There's a reason. There was always a serpent, a spiral, and six-fingered and sick-toed drawings. Fallen angels are real. And a lot, they cannot take a physical form of their own, but they can take physical forms of others. And we're watching it happen right now. Richie from Boston. I'm out.